Hi babies. I am coming at you from the essence of who I am today. And I have uh, been pondering on some items, some revelation out of the book of 1 John and reconciling it with my humanity and just seeing and perceiving how, under, how, how much understanding and how many dimensions of our humanity extend beyond just the three dimensions that we seem to be locked in sometimes. And uh, we got to reconcile our humanity. Sometimes we have to reconcile mortality. But I'm here to tell you that Christ has reconciled, God has reconciled all things to God through Christ, including your mortality. And that when, when this light and this affirmation from the Father comes upon us, there are just innumerable dimensions of your metaphysical being that come to light. That God has brought light to immortality through the gospel. So that even when you feel run down, even when you feel weak, even when you feel frail, even when you feel like you're going to just go off and do something stupid, the, the gentle persuasion of the Holy Spirit, the affirmation of the Father comes in and, and he gently and simply woos us back into that place of, of, of who we are as, as being his offspring, of, of sharing in his nature. And I was uh, looking at some things today. There's a, a few um, things that passed in front of my face today. And, and I, I realized, oh, this is what it says about the, the lust of the eyes and, 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 the, and the pride of life and the lust of the flesh. And this is First John. This is the Apostle John talking to us. And admonishing us that those things of the world, those things that lock you into a three-dimensional reality, is the estimation of yourself that comes from the world that all you are is is your flesh or your your mind or your intellect or only those things that you can perceive with your senses, your natural senses. And when God comes along and brings light to immortality, it's like, well, wait a minute, there is a whole lot more here than I thought. And so I received the affirmation of the Father. I received light being brought to my immortality when I was looking at um, the lust of the flesh, the, the pride of life. There's things in me that were stirred. There was, there was in my flesh, there was an arousal. And, and I think that without that affirmation, without that light, when, when we really haven't been sucred by the Father, when we really haven't heard the gospel aright, it's really easy to uh, put on a cloak of hypocrisy and to hide and like Adam and Eve putting on the fig leaf and you know God came into the garden to fellowship with them and, and we, we, were, we realized that we were naked. We were locked into that three-dimensional reality and we forgot the dimensions. We forgot the light of immortality that we have when we're with you, God. And so just, just let me read this real quick. This is the Apostle John um, I write to you, little children. He calls you babies, too. <laughs> so he says, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven for his namesake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Do not love the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, babies. It is the last hour, and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, even now, Many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. 
For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and that no lie is of the truth. It's interesting to me that, that after this affirmation, and after this light shining on immortality, after, after I've written to you babies, I've written to you little children, I've written to you young men, you've overcome the wicked one, you've overcome the world. After, after a reminder through such tenderness, such simplicity, such gentleness, such bowels of compassion, the Apostle John speaks as a reminder to the dimensions, to your divine nature, reminding you that you're not of the world. And uh, that when we're locked into that limited perception and when something from the world or some image passes us by that it incites or arouses the flesh through the lust of the eyes or the pride of life or the, uh, uh, the, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life and the lust of the eyes. When this comes along, uh, it's like we just need that gentle reminder. We need that light brought to, brought to immortality because the, the, the destruction and the corruption of flesh. I mean, if all you think that you are is flesh, it's like, Go, go ahead and have at it and just live to the nth degree of seeking whatever pleasure rocks you. But there's more than that. There's so much, with such simplicity and gentleness, God leads us into a greater dimension. The height and the depth and the width and the breadth that is in the love of Christ comes to us. And I, I've heard a lot of speculation. I've heard a lot of supposition lately uh, about Antichrist. And there, there are a lot of people that get into their end times and eschatological uh, ideas about who the Antichrist might be or how we're going to uh, prevent being deceived by the Antichrist and if we're going to be arrested or if we're going to be persecuted as Christians. And, and just let, let me tell you, what difference does it make if, if Antichrist denies the Father and the Son? And you know that persuasion of the Father. You know his affirmation, and by his simplicity and gentleness, he's brought light to the dimensions of who you are. What difference does it make who the Antichrist is, or what his influence is? Because he, what does he, I hear this very seldom, that, that when, when we talk about the end time stuff, that the love of the Father, the affirmations of the Father, our place partaking in the, the divine nature, the, the, the full liberty that we have to just run and play and live and move and have our being in him as little kids, as babies, because he's our father. It's like you're just oblivious to this Antichrist stuff. And I think people worry themselves a little too much about this Antichrist stuff because when it comes down to it, it's like when you forget who you are, when you forget what your source is, when that light uh, isn't shining on your immortality and you forget that you are going to live forever, it's like, well, go stick your head in the ground and wait for the rapture, I suppose, and become completely irrelevant to the world and society, <laughs> you know? But when you're working in the favor of the Most High, when you, you're going to be you, you, you can rock the world when you know that, that affirmation, when you know that ridiculous measure of favor is upon you, that the way that God the Father loves his son, that it, it, it makes you giddy. It, it makes you bold. It makes you audacious. It's like people try to lock you into that three-dimensional reality like the way that the world is. It's like, just pay your bills, just pay your bills, put food on the table. It's like, oh my goodness, there's so much more than that. And, and when you think that that's all there is, there, that, that's the Antichrist illusion. If, if all you're worried about is paying your bills and making it to work and punching your clock, you know, that's an Antichrist illusion. That is a, 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 a form of bondage. And there's a lot of people in the world that are already under the Antichrist system because they think that's all that they are. You can speculate about the beast or the man of sin or the, the mark that people are going to re receive when they're going to be compelled to, to worship the image of the beast or whatever, but what, what, what is the beast? The beast is being locked into your carnal mentality and thinking that all you are is 
what your senses perceive instead of all these metaphysical dimensions and instead of all this, the, the, the light that's shining on on your immortality and, and the heavens that you have access to now and just the love of the Father. Um, I just need, I, I was springboarding off of an occasion where there were some things aroused me earlier. And I understand that, that people want to shrink back and they want to hide and they put on a cloak of hypocrisy when stuff like that happens. I just want to invite you to believe the gospel. I want to invite you to believe the affirmation and the favor that God has for you that in those occasions when the lust of the eyes or the lust of the flesh or the pride of life comes upon you, that you can embrace with simplicity and gentleness that light shining on your immortality, that affirmation of the Father, that audacity that you can have to walk in this world that as Christ is, so are you in this world because he loves you and regards you and sees you in no different way than he does his own son. That's good news. So it's a springboard. If you if you want to cloak a hypocrisy and if you want to try to punch your clock or pay your tithes or show up to your church or try to pull this Christian walk off in um, just a form instead of the reality of the favor that drives and propels us into this audacity, you, you know, just knock yourself out. But there, there is a place of grace. And a lot of Christians, I, I'm listening, you know, they, they wring their hands about the Antichrist. They don't know grace. Uh, and and they, they don't understand that, that when they're confronted with these lies from the Antichrist, when they, they feel like that their flesh is heightened like that, they want to run and hide it. You don't have to run and hide. It's just an opportunity for the, for the affirmation of the Father to turn you with simplicity and gentleness back to who you are. Oh, my goodness. I love you a whole lot, babies. My little children, I write to you. My little children, my babies, be afraid rest in your humanity and let that light come and manifest things in you that through the affirmation of the Father you didn't know were there but he's drawing them out he's drawing them out he's drawing them out you can run and hide and you can cover yourself with up with your cloak of hypocrisy all that you want to you can't hide <laughs> you can't hide he's coming he's gonna draw you out there's gonna be a whole lot of surprises for the babies <laughs>